Welcome to the Neckle, guys. It's your host, the Night Rancher. Now, I'm in the middle of modifying the stock 5.3 coil bracket, and I'm going to be installing a set of these LS2 style uh, Daytona Sensor Smart Mark ignition coils. And to do the modification, I've already done one. This is the second side. I've already got the other four coils already here. It's actually a pretty simple swap uh, because it's all basically plug and play. The holes for the coils are basically the same distance apart and the connector is the same. It's just a matter of making room and spacing these coils up because unlike these ones that actually dig into the bottom of the coil bracket, they actually hold the rest of it down here. This one is all held up on top and the only way to get these uh, bolt holes to line up is to actually raise it up a little bit off the bracket. Since we won't be able to put it up against that, I've been using these uh, nylon spacers. Uh, these were about 55 cents each and I ended up cutting them in half. Uh, and then I'm going to be tidying them up and then using these as spacers to go in between. Originally I was planning to use metal spacers, but they were 75 cents each. And each coil takes two. By the end of it, it's going to be about $35 for everything, including the bolts. Uh, you could buy the actual billet aluminum brackets off of somewhere like ICT billet. Uh, they're about $65, I believe. Uh, and then I believe they include the little spacers that you have to use anyway. So either way, you have to use a set of spacers. Uh, I believe ICT billet are $65. All the hardware and everything, I ended up spending about $15. So if you want to say 50 bucks, you can do it this way. Uh, obviously, I'm later going to go ahead and sandblast the bracket after I'm all done powder coat it, powder coat my valve cover so it looks all nice and race car. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and take this apart and I'm gonna show you how this thing gets basically assembled. Okay, so this is what one of them looks like installed. You guys can see I'm using the nylon spacers and if you guys can see i don't know how well it comes up in camera but i've actually cut them when i cut them in half i cut them at a taper so that way when i install them i can clock them in a way so that the coil doesn't actually touch the bracket so it doesn't vibrate on it or anything so uh you can't really tell but the coil is not touching the bracket whatsoever so i uh, with the hardware that i ended up using their metric six by 1.0 that's the thread pitch and then i ended up using phillips head uh, bolts because they were cheaper. I could have used a hex like a standard bolt But uh, then I'd have to get a washer and then it'd be like twice as much as this or I could get the flanged bolts that actually have like a flange on top and it's a hex that they look, those look really nice But same thing. They're about a dollar a piece and I wasn't about to spend Two dollars per coil. So that's another sixteen dollars on just bolts. So I we're trying to keep this budget here So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of them and it's basically gonna be the exact same thing. Before I finish the rest of them though, I do need to remove this little leg that's up here that used to be for the little valve covers that used to go on top. We're not gonna be utilizing this at all, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it right here. I'm gonna remove this leg. While I'm at it, I'm also gonna remove everything that I don't need off this bracket. So for example, this little hole right here, I'm not gonna need it, so I'm gonna cut it straight. This right here as well, I don't need I'm going to cut it straight. So everything where the harness goes, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to make sure I don't hit the harness. So I'm going to position this in a way so that I don't end up cutting it on accident. But everything else should be exactly the same, and I'm just going to cut whatever I don't need. All right, fast forward. I just finished all the trimming. Got rid of this, this, and this one over here. So like I said, I'm not worried about the fit and finish right now. I just need it done so I can get this truck moving again since I've already pulled off the coils. So let's go ahead and reassemble this and let's see what it looks like. I've got some great news for you guys. I've got a link down below. It's not an affiliate link or anything, but it is a link to the Daytona Sensors official website where you guys can purchase either this or the SSLS ignition system or any related components. And you can use code NIGHTRENCHER at checkout and it'll give you free ground shipping. I was able to get this code for when I originally did the review of the SSLS, but I've managed to reactivate this code for the LS2 coils. So in case you guys wanna run some fancy coils 
wheels on your Gen 3, Gen 4 carbureted LS, go ahead and use that link in the description below. All right, here they are, all assembled and good to go. The What's difficult is getting the wiring harness to stretch just a little bit more. Uh, the stock harness is a little bit brittle because of the type of tape that they use, but it's not so bad to the point where it's impossible to do. It's just a little bit tight, and after it's on there, it's on there pretty good. You don't really have to worry about it. Also, uh, it looks like they're like really stretched, but they're really not. There's actually plenty of wiggle room on this thing. If You could probably warm it up and reform it if you wanted to, uh, but everything else works fine. Like I said before, we had to go ahead and uh, cut this off because it does get in the way of this coil. Uh, we cut we cut this off, we cut that off. Later, like I said, we're going to go ahead and tidy this up. But for, as for the coils themselves, they've been able to fit perfectly. Next step is just to install them and run them. And then I'll give you guys a full review on these coils, probably in another video or two. So that's it for now. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher, out.